And here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on the Real Liberty Media dot com tonight, today, night, day. My night, your day. Sometimes both. Sometimes neither. And that's if you pick it up on a replay, because that's what I do a lot of the time. And I'd like to say thanks a lot to Grimner for you know giving me the time to put my little podcast out here and say my uh, perceive well I guess say how I see the, th- the things going on and, and what I make of it all. And uh, we got tonight the bots and bodies in the Real Liberty Media dot com chat for your typing entertainment. We've got Barman Grimner Moose Girl. Brackets DC anti underscore Asmo Chelsidani Free Enslaved Graham Z I B Don C Java Doctor underscore two haven't seen him typing much lately haven't seen much of him since uh, he was recovering pretty good from that that knee surgery and then poof haven't seen him in a couple of weeks I don't think anyway we've also got tonight for your typing entertainment. Master Brow, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Trust Number One, Vanna White, Weather Dork, Z Beth Z, Phantom Circle, Hello Honey, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Flash Somebody, that's me, Frumpy, Gooberzilla, Ha Ha Ha, J Dread, J's Nines, J's Kiss. Kiss underscore, Ponder Gander, Sock Puppet, Smataz, Vanna White underscore, Vanna Whitey, and Vinny Terrian. Jeez, Vinny, you got enough names chalked up there? You're making it look like there's more people here <laughs> than bots. We're, we're heavy in the bots tonight in the RLM chat, but that's okay. Because some of the people, uh, they like that, you know. And some of the people don't care for it so much. And that's what makes the fucking world go around, is the liking some things better than liking other things. And not getting your way all the time may be just part of the poor man's life. Who is to know? But as a representative of the poor population... <laughs> What we disagree about covers just about everything. I mean, if you write it on a chat screen, somebody's going to come back with opposing opinion by God and country. And, uh, hmm. Well, Rob Works and Vinny are having a little disagreement on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat this evening. So, uh, you know, if you want to pick a side... Join up now and pick up a name. And Rob Works and Vinny are duking it out. Mano y mano. <laughs> so, that's how seriously I I really think I take this, you know, the personality jazz on the chats, you know. Because we're people and we disagree with shit. And th- this person does it that way and that person does it this way. And, and the whole thing is based around appearances of things and how things look more so most of the time than the freaking point of what the messenger is trying to tell you. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe that taking it to that point, to that level of I'm a messenger and I'm trying to tell you something, well, that could be a, a hindrance in a way. It depends on the listener. And, you know, it's... 2004, so that's 420 somewhere, and I'm going to go with that, fuck it, and uh, continue my crazy ramble about personalities on the interwebs of life, because, hmm, you know, there's that reality in the free walk around and, and be somebody world, whatever you call that society shit. And some places, uh, societies are very con- confrontational and, and demanding. Um, <laughs> okay, Vinny, if you say so. I just, you know, ah, I like you both. So when you guys disagree, to me, it, it's just kind of like dead air time. 
I'm, I'm not picking a side in, in a fight I'm not involved in. That that would be like being a warmonger. You know, so you two don't get along, so I'm going to jump in on it so I can make it worse for somebody. Uh, I'm going to stay the fuck out of it. Maybe I'll throw a one-liner and be, you know, crass and make a comment here and there, but picking a side in something that's got nothing to do with me is, that's everything I'm against. You know, that's the whole point of why the group of us do what we do, you know, and we do kind of exist by these rules of, hey, you know, if you don't like it, Iggy me. If you don't like it that bad, go ahead and, you know, Iggy it, blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, even when we don't get along, we're willing to to discuss it, you know, whatever that means, because freaking opinions on a Internet site about shit that's already happened doesn't really do anybody any good. I mean, it sounds like it does, but I don't think it does. But I was listening to Miss Mary's um, podcast today. It's Thursday. That's how I know it's Thursday, by the way. Because I catch her rerun because I'm old guy. And old guys don't stay up until, you know, the wee hours of the morning to hear American radio podcasts on the interwebs. But she did a good, uh, a good link. I want to put out as much as possible because people need to be aware of these things and they're not and they're so indoctrinated by the system that whether you want to agree with the system or not it's what you know if it's what you know then that's what you think therefore being wrong is not going to come easy now this headline here I'm going to post a guy that's been posted already I posted it once earlier but because I'm reading it, if you guys want to see it up close and personal, this is what it is. And I think it's kind of important that this kind of idea gets out into the world, the electronic world. I'm not concerned about people that don't have the interest that we have in looking at what's going on the way we do. I will continue with confirmed cancer is entirely a man-made disease. And this is from, let me see, what is it from? Oh, holy smokers. Natural News. It says, the world's top news source on natural health. Part of the Natural News Network. And it's got a little bit of advertising up at the top there for you to peruse. And the story goes like this. Natural News. It may be hard to believe, but... A recent study shows that cancer is 100% a man-made disease. And that is that and that it is caused by modern-day phenomena like pollution and di dietary intake. Phew. Mary had an easier time reading this than I am. <laughs> Researchers at the University of Manchester's KNH Center for Biomedical Egyptology in England <laughs> reached that conclusion in 2010 after reviewing remains and literature from ancient Egypt and Greece, as well as other periods. A study that also included the first historical diagnosis of cancer in an Egyptian mummy. Now, the study published at the time in the journal Nature Reviews Cancer noted that researchers found only one occurrence of cancer while investigating hundreds of Egyptian mummies. In addition, they found very few references to the disease in period literature, which indicates that cancer cases were extremely rare during the period. However, after the Industrial Revolution, cancer rates exploded and in particular among children, which proves that the rise in cases is not exclusively tied to longer life. Aha, see, back backtrack, people. <coughs> okay, where was I? Uh-oh, I had to move my thing now. I've lost my... Hmm. Here we go. In industrialized societies... Cancer is second only to cardiovascular disease as a cause of death. But in ancient times, it was extremely rare, said Professor Rose 
Rosa Lee David. Oh, man. I didn't really fuck this radio shit up so good sometimes. But anyway, you only live once. And, uh, yeah, well, I'm down. So, well, sorry. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll, I, I guess that you guys know what, what's going on in the world around you. And what's going on in the world around you isn't necessarily going on in the world. I mean, might be different, like it is for me. Uh, I was just telling Cirque before the show that uh, when I went, I went to the grocery where needed some coffee for our coffee experience this evening, and I let it run a little low, so I was getting some refills. And the kid at the uh, at the gr- grocery store. She does the the money thing in English for me because, you know, she's learning how to use the English for some kind of class or something on top of it. So she gets a chance to practice, and tonight she looked a little bummed because uh, I think she's bored of her job. You know, she wants to do something more. <laughs> and that's just from, you know, buying groceries and watching a kid behave that, at certain age in life, you start to pay attention to these uh, maybe trivial little things, but they're important to the other guy, you know, and I think I spend a lot more time in reality, you know, mixing with the Danes and all that, more concerned with them than uh, me, in, in a weird sense of the word, because people can make such a, a big deal out of words over a link or a a comment or a perspective or a side of something that it can get violent, you know, not physically violent, but emotionally violent. You get mad and you get involved in it. So are we pissed off at the message or the messenger or both? And why? What, you know, at the end of the damn game, what does it really freaking matter what the score was? I mean, I like playing the game. But the world that we live in is very competitive, and people, you know, they want to do this, and they want to do that. <clears throat> oh, they're talking about you only live once, but you have many lifetimes in the physical realm, says the Grimner. See, there's so so many ways to look at what's possible, that when you post what you believe, people get... Uh, they want to join a side or something, not just let you have your opinion about something. Whether you're right or wrong, it doesn't matter. That's what the other guy thinks. So, you know, what the fuck? Judging their, uh, judging somebody else's opinion, why would you do that if it wasn't, say, in a completely negative light? I could see judge. Well, I've, here we go with judgments, you know, because it's what we do. I do it all the time. If I didn't do it, I just nil, willy nilly walk across the street while the cars are driving down the road. No, fuck no. I use my judgment, check my distance meter, and how fast is that car going? Do I have enough time to make it to the other side before he runs me over or not? And if there's any doubt, I wait for the car to go by. It's judgment, and I think that when we're typing shit like you know. Vinny and uh, Robert getting a little pissy at each other about shit. Well, okay, but what's the point? You know, when you think about it, neither one of you is going to ever bend. So it's just like me and Ansel. We've just got this repetitious loop that we're typing through, and nobody's nobody's seeing anything any different from any side of it. It's just the way the world has seem to uh, evolved into making us do these weird things that they're hmm, they're so unnatural that when you're doing them you're doing them out of anger so that should be an indicator right from the beginning something's not right you know I'm not blaming or calling anybody names or nothing I just I'd like to see people get along with each other I know it's not humanly possible it's just the, it's in the design of the game, and it's the expected result of the fucking food and shit we eat. You guys, I tell you, I've had uh, over the course of my my life, 
every once in a while I'll hear this high pitched like a bell ringing in my ear and I've always shrugged it off and it's not constant or regular but over years years and years it's happened enough to where I've noticed it so I was reading about what causes that and it led me to magnesium <laughs> so what the fuck is magnesium and this is the the beauty of having this internet thing and if you're if you're sitting in front of the same machine I'm sitting in front of and your cure for us all is to do as we're told well one you're not listening to my shit cuz you're way out there in the you know in that authoritarian freaking world where people shove you around with fucking badges and weapons and force you to do things for the good of everybody else. No, no. See, doing something good should never have to be forced on you. If you're doing good, then you're doing good. You don't you don't shove it down somebody say, hey, I'm doing this good thing for you. Don't 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 mind the bleeding. It's really for your own good. And that's the way I I see us getting treated by the by the systems that we live in. And, you know, some places are a little nicer about it than others. <clears throat> but in the end, in the long run, it all comes down to the same shit. Is if you don't pay the fucking piper, your ass is going to get fucked up by the state. And that in itself is, is our problem. Well, because I believe that we're we're raised into it. It's all done on purpose. And the government got a hold of the government. Uh, schools or government now and mm, I just repeated the word and when I was trying to say was the schools you know the government has gobbled everything up and made itself this big gigantic entity that individuals t are terrified of Miss <laughs> um, Kate put up a link about Tommy Tommy Chong and this Joe Rogan guy or whatever and they <coughs> Mm. They interviewed uh, Tommy, and he was talking about his time in prison and what got him there. And what got him there, this is what I read, was somebody had used his name to sell a bong, and uh, technically that's against the law, the Postal Service laws. So they got him for uh, some kind of technicality on that, using his name to sell a bong. Can you imagine? And here we are, 2019, and now these people are arguing about what kind of tax should we charge for this particular strain of cannabis. Uh, the same people that were just putting you the fucking jail for it are now trying to count the pennies, you know, from the taxes because oh, the tax money will be so good, and we'll be able to do this. Every fucking scam in the world, they did it with lottery too. I remember that from California. Oh, we're going to have a state lottery so the kids will have money for the schools. And the one thing the schools never saw was a dime of any fucking lottery winnings from anybody. And the people that did get any of it were the big uppity-ups, not the people that need it. And here we are in this really fucked up, stupid-ass society that fuels the fucking minor 1% just feeds them every fucking thing like they deserve it. And then sit back and complain about it. Like, oh, well, look, I have to pay my taxes. No, you don't. You do if you sign, if you apply to pay them and they accept it, then, yeah, now you're in a contract, stupid. What do you... <laughs> but that's not how it's presented. But that's how it was presented to me and how I was talked to. And I went, what? Nah, you can't be serious. So uh, have it your way. Believe what you want. And when people in my history would end something like that, because that's how I met my wife, by the way, is uh, the, instead of arguing with me, continue, okay, let's carry this on. You're stupid, so we'll just fuck with you some more. Instead of doing that, they said, well, if you don't believe it, well, that's cool. Don't. You'll find out one way or the other as you get older. Blah, blah, blah. That was the end of it. It wasn't like a make make me feel any particular way about nothing. And that's how I met Cirque. She uh, made a comment in a link, and I said, ah, you got to be full of shit. Nobody's that fucking nice. 
And instead of arguing with me, she said, okay, well, if that's what you think, you know, fuck you. <laughs> and left. And we ran into each other again. And the rest is kind of just what happened. But things aren't always what they appear to be the first moment that you see them. You know, things can change if you want them to. Uh, I don't know how to explain something like that. But I don't take everything that I read to heart, you know, I guess, or see even. Half the fucking shit that goes on in, in life is way so far away from me. I don't care about it. I don't give a flying shit if North Korea attacks, uh, what is that, Hawaii. <laughs> Maybe they could get something that far. Uh, wow, they're a big threat to the, you know, to the United States' interests. They got to go. And as long as you keep raising people that grow up believing that kind of crap is real and and to stand behind it, well, then this is the shit where you're going to have. And America is the big bully, all fucking stretched out all over the fucking world trying to fight everybody at the same time. Well, hmm. is it a coincidence that all these things are happening and there there's this border that, that's just kind of open <laughs> in the south? Then, then there's the border that's open in the north. And, you know, just like the Indians before them, they're just going to be overrun by other people that are just going to fuck them all up and take the shit from them and start another country. <laughs> so, what the fuck does it matter? It's it's way over there somewhere. So, you know, until it hits me, I don't I don't think I'm going to care. And then this freaking EU crap. These fucking lunatics in Brussels are out of their fucking minds. I've never seen it. The, the closest thing to the EU is America. I mean, as far as, boy, these people got their heads so far fucking up their ass, they could probably lick theirself, like in the tonsils. But uh, that's just my own personal sick opinion about these. Uh, wow, I think they're just fucking liars. I, I can't, I, I can't justify forgiving them because they always get caught and investigated by their own shit. So yeah. Uh, oh, and then they can't prove it in court, but you know he did it or she did it. But blah 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 blah. Let's let's just look the other way one more time. Anybody smoking weed? <laughs> We've got some empty jail cells. If you're smoking marijuana, hmm. what a way to live. By the end of a, I guess the end of a a gun. Is that what it would be? Maybe that's not even what it is. Cause, or it could be because there's a lot of open cannabis use here where I live. More than in uh, in, in the city, I would say. Copenhagen was uh, one way. Of course, Freetown, everybody, you know, blah, 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 do whatever you want, smoking-wise. But out here in the country, it's more, instead of um, flaunting, they just don't go out of their way their way to hide like they're doing anything wrong. It says like they're smoking a cigarette. And that's the feeling I just get from it, you know. So, my observations of them, of course, are, you know, my American opinions that I brought along with me. Because people aren't supposed to get along this well with each other. With a, I've yet to see any, any arguing or and the guys drink out behind the bar or behind the train station at the kiosk. And they've got uh, dogs, and they're all having, but they're quiet people. They're not yelling and having problems. They're just, they gather and they have their, I call it the, you know, the city council meeting. Because these are the people that, you know, really, <laughs> those are the ones that you judge everybody else by in the long run. If you're going to live in that world of judgment. And there's nothing lower in the world than somebody that's, you know, constantly sucking on a can of beer. But if they're going to do it, then they're going to be accepted for doing it as long as they don't, you know, stray off too far and, and get too insane. That shouldn't be a problem, and I don't think it is a problem. But I've lived in other places where, man, you crack a beer and all of a sudden they have open container laws like, what? Like, 
like you're five years old, you can't have a couple of beers without running around acting the fool. It's the uh, it's the insinuation to me that up front, before anything even happens, that preventative police and policing in pro- prevention is going to protect the future victim from being killed by somebody with alcohol or drugs or guns or you know and, no predicting the future is stupid i think that the whole point of that is to keep you out of the now so you can't have a good time today cuz you're all worried about being destroyed by, you know, oh, these people are going to get me, and those people are going to get me. And what? who was it? I guess it was Grammy. So Grammy was playing the rocket chair today. For me, because I, I can't stay up late enough to listen to her live, so I do the reruns in the daytime here in Denmark. And they're doing some bubbling on the RLM. I'm telling you, man, cannabis is one of the best parts of life. I mean, for an outside, you know, something outside to put in you to balance out some of this negative freaking shit that goes on. Pot. And I sort of was talking about is I think people around here, more of them smoke than don't. Uh, or either participate or accept it as normal and, and not this vicious, wicked, horrid, oh, pot, you're going to go to hell, blah, 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 bullshit we grew up with, when none of it was ever fucking true in the first place. But to live somewhere where it's so common to uh, not be, you know, shocked by a little hash doesn't doesn't make anybody's skirt go anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, Rob, that that's a trap that you know, you've got to forgive people for ever being suckered into that trap. And then on the other hand, if you don't get suckered into that trap, then you have to find, you know, uh creative ways of survival that don't involve banks and shit. Not everybody's capable of living a life in the world without leaving a paper trail. You know, that's their goal is to leave a paper trail. That was the last thing I gave a shit about. I didn't care where I was or where I lived or fuck all that influence and oh look at me I've got this and I've got that it was that was fine to watch other people do but I didn't want to do it. So fortunately, see my version of my life, you know, fortunately for me, I was uh, spared all that uh, com- competition and grief basically. And I hung out with enough people in those professions that I once looked up to and saw what I saw and thought, boy, I got lucky getting the hell out of that stuff instead of getting into it. Now, of course, it's a it's a sense of you know perspective because some people are for all that education shit. And I think, wow, well, while somebody else was filling your head up, you educated person out there with all this nonsense that you can't apply to anything in reality (laughs) or real life. You can type it on a screen every once in a while and try to look real important, but what are you going to do with that information sitting in your living room watching TV? So, my point is basically all the crap that we all fucking know is all garbage. It's worth very little. You can do very little with it. And, and the things that we do know, well, if you're not doing those things that you're good at, and you're learning all these other things that are really a waste of your freaking time, but you don't know it. You'll know it when you're my age, maybe. Hmm. And some people won't. Some people uh, see the chains of society as successful. I have survived. Look at how far I got up the pole. Da, da, da. Dig me. I'm cool. And hey, that, you know, that's cool with me if that's what you want to do, but I don't want to do it. Now, the part that bothers me about people that do play the game, and they accuse me of taking advantage of their game when I have, you know, I'm gone. I stay out of the fucking game completely. I don't do any commerce in, with American dollars whatsoever, period. Zero dinero. So, uh, no. 
in that respect, I'm I'm free of American. As long as I don't want their paper, then uh, and I don't want their services, then I'm good. The minute I go looking for freaking help from government of any kind, Denmark or America, then I'm done. Then whoever gives me the help is the fuckers that own my paperwork. And until that comes, uh, I've been I feel treated as a free man. I don't feel like I'm. Uh, kept in any damn anything people are nice uh, my wife is good to me my dog even <laughs> likes me even hannah she's a little loud in the barking sometimes but she's just protecting us from the evil that men do <laughs> you know in dogs dog speak i cirque figured it out when she's all barking she's just letting us know it's calm out there and not to worry because there's nothing going on in freddy town this is like a retirement village with an edge. Very quiet place. Uh, what is Moose saying about stuff over here? Moose girl. Some people are too close-minded and think they already know everything, and those types of people will never learn. Well, yeah, I know. Well, of course, that person will accuse us of the very same thing that we're accusing them of because of a, a state of mind that you carry and a state of mind that you verbalize and the state of mind that you're in is contrary to what the state will allow the state doesn't allow you to think for yourself you can't think for yourself and vote for fucking donald trump at the same time well, you'd have to wow to support a fucking lion sack of shit president in, in this time in life of any suit color or whatever propaganda they're putting out there in the public is all a bunch of shit. If you ain't figured that out by now, well, you you deserve the shit you're going to get. And it ain't going to be what you're projecting because no, 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 no. We are, see, we should be sticking together, not looking for who's going to win. Is it like a, I read yesterday, some people, they think that they're going to uh, survive the the coming apocalypse, you know, and then scourge the grounds for, you know, ways to survive, but they know how to do that. Well, you know what, I'd rather miss that show than be in it, so, wow, I'm not looking forward to that. Now, what, what kind of sick fuck sits around and dwells on the end of the world and how to survive the, you know, the massacre to follow? I, I'll pass, that's just ridiculous to me, but... You know, if that's what you want to do, that that's cool. I and mean, if you have a plan, well, that's even cooler. But you know what they say about plans? Hmm. Do you? Well, sport? Huh, 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 huh. Well, I know what they say about plans. They say that plans are something to be laughed about. Because, sorry, Grim, about not... Ca I, yeah, I was muted. Everybody told me to... How embarrassing. Boy, I can't run a radio podcast to save my ass. But I have fun when I do it. So where are we at tonight? I think uh, we're taking it too far verbally, you know. And then when you come right down to it, the things that are important in your personal life have nothing to fucking do with your opinions about military or politics or sex um, tra trafficking or any of this other horseshit that we read about on the internet they've they've got us you know aimed at the negative shit that's going to keep you all nasty and crusty and once you figure that part out there you go you know the rest will write itself in a in kind of a weird way Based on my three principles to unfuck the world, baby. And I'm telling you, if you follow my three-step plan, you too can behave in the world as I do. And enjoy the fruits of your labor. <laughs> Instead of uh, uh, being pissed off that there's illegal aliens and this and taxes and, wow, you know. I figure it like this. Whatever problems I have in life, but if I if I choose to look at something and consider it a problem, well, that's a choice I just made. I don't have to do that at all if I don't want to. I could just like not bother with it. It doesn't. 
Your opinion about me is as important as my opinion about Pink Floyd. It doesn't change the fact that there is a Pink Floyd, and it doesn't change the facts of people that have participated in the works of the Pink Floyds. Right? 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 Get it? Huh? 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 So, opinions. Hmm. I don't know. Some people are pretty full of their self when they think about how good their opinion must look when they type it out for everybody else to see. And they go, hey, unworld the fuck, my friend. That is true. You can unfuck the world. Well, you can unworld the fuck. Wouldn't take much. It's just so freaking hard to admit to the uh, the frauds done against us as a collective to hold the people accountable who are truly guilty of what's going on is so misled and buried and, and misrepresented that, uh, for example, I just seen a link yesterday, I think maybe the day before, it was about uh, the Red Cross, I think, pretty sure it was Red Cross, and uh, nine cents off of the dollar goes to helping people do any fucking thing. The rest of it is administrative and uh, salaries and shit like that. The main honcho there was making like 400 and something a year plus expenses. or It was outrageous. It was like, wh what is enough? I mean, how, how much money do you need to have? And how many places do you need to go to be important? No, nah, there's see, there's something more to this game than we're we're taught wrong from the start, and I think people just uh, if they got to follow their ideas, you know, with a little bit of support behind them, they would end up in different places than they're at. Of course, that's just an opinion, you know, based on you can't undo what you did, so you got to deal with what you do, and then. Society kind of expects and pushes some people around in ways that uh, didn't work so good on me. Luck now, luck be I don't fucking know about any of that. All I know is, in, in the time of life where everybody else was obeying this fucking thing, I was ignoring the damn thing like it wasn't even there. And lo and behold, here here I sit. And nothing became of my great, you know, driving without a license crime spree. Or my, uh, I always had a passport, but not, uh, not a state or a uh, state ID. And I gave that up when I gave up driving. I figured, what the hell did I need that for? But I had to get that shit again when I got my passport. <laughs> but then those things expire, so you let them go. I, I don't chase paperwork like that. And, you know, pay, Only when I need it. <laughs> so, I guess if you've never been through that, you wouldn't know what it means. Hmm. Well, for those of you that have... Mary's done it. Mary's done that passport shit. She knows what I'm talking about. But there's a few people on the uh, RLM that... I wish they could get a passport, but because of the freaking laws, you know, laws. What the fuck does a criminal record have to do with your ability to travel somewhere? What the fuck does that matter? It's like we're all capable of crime at any given moment for no particular fucking reason. Just read the law books. You'll find out three felonies on any given day. It just They don't choose to, you know, look for you so they can prove it. But when they want to, they will. Anyway, that's the state. I'm talking about the they. And I think that the state here is a little softer because they got such a small population. They can't really afford to abuse many of their own people. So they, they keep the abuse of their own very minimal, I think. And that and the foreigners. They don't treat the foreigners so hot. But, you know, that's the game that... Uh, the military wants to play, so if one country wants to, you know, be a little tighter with the money than another, that's their business, I think. But, then again, <laughs> I don't really care too much on a personal level. I was just using it as an example of my ongoing, you know, <laughs> interest in the world around me. Uh, she, Moose is going to Harmony. And 
somebody that lives in E.C. Uh, Grimner has no interest in a passport. Yeah, you know what, Grimner, neither did I. Uh, but, like I've said before, you've heard me harp on this many times. You know, if I hadn't uh, agreed to whatever this whole thing was, I would have never met Cirque. <laughs> so, so, it worked out for me. I, I didn't want to do it, you know. But every once in a while, it's, I do everything I'm told, and only a few things I'm told not to, is my motto. It's what I live by. But yeah, I'll I'll do it maybe sooner or later. You know, I might put it off for a while, but yeah, I'll get to it. But I very rarely say no and don't do some you know something. No. Or I'll like with the radio. As badly as I do the radio, I show up for it and I do I do my best. I'm just not very good at it. It's not operating things with this computer is not my strong suit. So I just <laughs> I just try to have some fun with it, you know, and deal with the the bumps in the road as they happen. But uh, oh yeah, and then Miss Mary did that that show, and I was really impressed with her her cancer link. But uh, I fell I fell asleep before her show, but I didn't turn off my computer, so she didn't know I wasn't I wasn't really on. I was just uh, I forgot to log off before I went to bed. And you know, lazy old man, dumb things like that happen. But uh, and then she did a show like me where she was unprepared, which is really unusual for her. She usually plans herself ahead, but you know, doing dork table with me was. Uh, her plan and me just doing whatever I felt like doing at the time. I don't. I don't think we. <laughs> I don't think we were ever talking about the same thing. It was just the funniest damn show. And uh, Miss Mary is always always welcome back at the dork table. She knows that. So I'm just hinting. So in case you're looking for Mary, you might find her on Saturday hanging out with me. Because uh, oh, I was noticing this about uh, people will have a situation come up on the internet chat rooms. And the minute they post their little problem or thing or idea or question, other people come right to the rescue. And what I noticed was there was a lot of meaningless instruction about the obvious. Now, I'm not going to go into any uh, specific definition on that one. You guys, if, if you care about that perspective, just take a look sometime. You know, meaningless instruction of the obvious is just the point. And we all do it. I do. I'm sure I do it because uh, I'm stuck on stupid on certain content. You know, there's no convincing me that cannabis or hemp is bad for the, the anything. And there's no way that... Uh, I could ever be convinced that if the shit we're doing were, were halted, it could be repaired in probably in our lifetime, what we have left of a lifetime, if they started on it tomorrow. But it ain't going to happen. So we've got this impending doom. <laughs> Bring on the meteors! You know, something. Uh, it's, uh, it's like being threatened by a bully every freak day over and over until you've had the fuck enough and then you just punch the bully in the face and see what's going to freaking happen but as you mature in life once you've I guess uh, overcome your fear of that verbal bullying bullshit and you're not afraid to stand your damn ground the bullying stops see that's why uh, what's his name Hansel I Hansel's just a I don't know like a clown, but uh, gets on you. He gets on my nerves after a while, so I had to. I had to iggy him again today. Poor Hansel, don't get it. He's such a negative Joe. Some day he'll wake up and he'll have his dream, and he'll be out there hunting for you know zombies or whatever, killing shit or whatever the fuck his plan is. Gets a lot of attention uh, for that particular idea, but I have no idea what his plan is outside of surviving the apocalypse and, you know, beating the zombies. Good luck with that plan there, sport. That's almost as crazy as uh, what uh, as Goober and his spaceships, but, uh, you know, nobody ever did explain to me where the fuel came from to get back from the moon once they were on the moon, 
But, you know, what what can you say? You tell a lie once, you tell it twice. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. Vinny's being a, a meanie guy. Wow, there's some mean stuff going on in the RLM chat tonight. They're pulling fingernails and doing all kinds of horrible things to each other. Airplanes are disease tubes. Really, Krimner. I haven't been on one since 2014, so... Hmm. I didn't get sick on the one I was on, either. In fact, I've never had a bad in uh, bad flight, ever. I've heard people with horror stories about babies. and I did have a problem getting on a plane to England once. And uh, <laughs> I love this bit. So it's crowded, you know, getting on this big jet plane, going to New York from L.A., bound for London. And uh, or it was either L.A. or San Francisco. I can't remember the city now. But uh, I'm st- standing behind this woman, and she's putting her shit up above her and all this, that, and the other. And she's a, a little out of shape, and she's got a lot of shit. And she looks at me and says, I'm... I'm working as fast as I can here. And I was just waiting. I didn't do anything or say anything to her. And then she turns over, turns her head to me and she says, what's wrong there? Don't speak of the English. And I said, hey, I understand the fucking English. I was just waiting for you to move your ass. <laughs> and I you know, got a little colorful. And then they, you know, we, we stopped bantering and, and I boarded my plane. But that was, in all the flights I've taken in, in, in lifetime, that, that's the one incident where it was unpleasant, and that was it. Some somebody insulting me because I didn't respond to them in a way they thought they deserved to be responded to, and that's all it was—a power play from some uppity stranger with a, a lot of luggage. <laughs> you know, because uh, you're supposed to be impressed by other, you know people's stuff and what they got and what kind of watch they wear and what kind of clothes and who does their hair and all this horse shit like (laughs) like any of that fucking matters at three o'clock in the morning but (laughs) it matters to some people and i think uh, what i figured out was i'm concerned about what matters to me at three o'clock in the morning and that's a really short list so everything else nah i'm not i'm not going to waste a lot of whatever time i got left i'm not going to waste a lot of that time you know, dicking around, worrying about negative Nelly shit. I'll, I'll talk about negative Nelly shit because we do need to be informed. I mean, shit. If you're not pissed off, you must be at least close to the answer, you know. But pissed off is where you start. You get mad at something. Mad about something. And it may not really be that obvious to, you know, to me it was didn't work that way uh, at first, I wasn't so sure. I just knew I was mad about something. Didn't always know what it was. But you feel anger for <laughs> waves come rushing, man. It, I know. I've been there. Uh, I'm sure other people are familiar with the, the the mode. And it's other people that bring it on. You don't just sit still quietly in your room and all of a sudden feel pissed off. No, no, no. Other people's interactions with us bring that on. <laughs> and that's how it works. They're wavelengths and they're, uh, they work without permission. You know, some people call them like, Hans was on some big rant about the laws of some bullshit or another. You know, and that's, to me, ah, all this written word crap, it, it all boils down to this guy's opinion about something. There is no way in the fucking world that individually we can prove or disprove 90% of the shit that we're told. It's just the way it is. Can't fight it. And in some cases, you're not allowed to ask any questions about it or uh, complain or demean or insult it for some reason. But then there's other things that you can openly insult one up one side, down the other side, through the center, up to the top again. <laughs> they love that shit. But then these these two other groups, oh no no no, don't say nothing bad about them. Holy smokes. You will get in financial trouble. 
So those of us like me that aren't financially troubled in the first place don't give a shit because there's nothing for them to take from me that, you know, what are they going to take? My life. <laughs> there's not much of that left. So I think they waited too long, but <laughs> they would have got a better return if they would have started earlier. But ah, wait a minute. Then Cirque, I got Cirque going on here. She's what, five years into this. We've been at this for five years legally, and uh, five and change. We got together real quick after we met. Met her and went, hey, I, you'll do. <laughs> Strange world that I live in, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's one of those impulse, I guess. I live that way, though. And everything I do, I think, is matter of impulse. And then it's weighed out to, well, what am I bound to? If I'm not bound to anything, then the impulses are stranger and stronger and, you know, like coming to Denmark. That was an impulse. That wasn't a, a great plan or anything. I went, hey, that's a good idea. I think I'll go there. <laughs> sure. Uh, how many of us do that? I overrate uh, the ability to follow your uh, my gut. You know, and and do what I think is going to be interesting. <laughs> Never know what the results are going to be until you do it. Ah, look at Graham Z and Vinny and Frumpy and J's Nines and J's and Moose Girl and Huh. They're all jamming on the RLM main feed right now because Graham Z is a superstar on the Real Liberty Media. And if you don't listen to her damn show, you better go out there and get uh, <laughs> fire up the rocket chair. Because last night, I'll tell you, the tw and this is the 23rd of May. I didn't even say it in the beginning. 2 zero, one, and 9. And last night, the 22nd, I guess, would have been her day uh, for Wednesday of May. She did a, an ultra good show. I was really pleased to hear it. And I, I listen to Mary, and I've done radio w with Mary, so I guess I'm a little bit prejudiced. But you know that I think the familiarity thing brings. A, uh, I'm not so much saying that she does anything badly. It just last night was especially interesting for some reason to me. You know, so eh, I can run around and uh, I don't know, judge this and judge that all I want, but. I think we all do, <laughs> that's what I was saying earlier in the show, you know, I think we all do that judgment thing. It's just, it's what you direct it at, your judgment at, that gets the result it gets. Because some things need judgment, and some things, um, experience, I would say. Well, is that another judgment, your experience? Because, you know, like I could be like one of those Magtow fuckers and go, ah, oh, well, I got dumped by my old lady and I don't ever want to be with another woman again. Ah, oh, fuck that. No, I just said, well, I guess I'll go live on a beach in Spain. And then I met Cirque and went, hey, maybe I won't be going to Spain after all. So there's a pit stop in Denmark. Let's go see what happens. And, uh, damn, I guess it sounds like, uh, Make believe, you know, like uh, most people just don't take that extra step. And it must sound horrible to the listener, but I recommend taking that extra step in life, whatever it is. It could be a lot less uh, physical, you know, it could be a mental thing. She's like uh, knowing that how the Federal Reserve Bank operates is. And understanding that it's not your friend is way better than believing that the government would never hurt you, blah, blah, blah. So, whether the information is uh, useful at the moment, you know, where you can actually get out there and physically do something with it, no, I don't think so. But, what I do think that is, if enough of us really, you know, knew what was going on, as the group in the RLM seems to, less a, less a person here and there. Some people take it way more seriously than others, I think. And uh, personalities being what they are, we're going to have conflict. But don't let the conflict you know, be the most important thing in your day. Sometimes i found, you know, like with disagreeing with Vinny, uh, talking about it one-on-one -on -one seemed to work the best. 
but that's me and Vinny. I mean, I don't know. Maybe other people can't do it. Maybe other people don't want to do it. I don't. I don't know. I'm just throwing out my experience as a fellow carbon-based life form out there into the galaxy. <laughs> Five years went by in a snap. Doesn't that work out that way, Miss Kate? I know. And but see, Cirque says she's going to get 25 more out of me. So go figure. The woman's got her, her mind made up. I don't. And she went out skeet shooting yesterday. And uh, I was kind of not for it, and because I'm I'm not for guns. I don't I don't see a gun as a. Uh, I have different opinions about life completely than most people, and uh, I just don't think there's anything to defend that requires a, a gun. No, so yeah, but there's other people that do, and I don't think I have the right to tell them. Hey, you can't do that because I don't want you to do it. So uh, I don't. And this place where I live, here we go with all this guns laws bullshit. So what? What? When you register your gun to the state, period, you're giving them the right to tell you you can't have it. That's what registering is all about. So the guy that doesn't go out there and register his weapon, well, he's still got the fucking weapon, whether it's registered or not. So, hmm, what is the point of all this? Well, could that be to keep track of who, you know, who, what, where, and when? <laughs> There's probably a lot more guns that can be accounted for than there are that are accounted for. But, whatever, because they're always making more and more and more, but they're always replacing the broken, <laughs> the broken ones. <laughs> shit that people abuse and, and didn't take care of it goes to a scrap pile somewhere in in your obs you know your uh what's this the, uh, planned obsolescence of uh commerce that we engage in so that you know you can have the modern up to date this that and the other and uh Vinny says some things are worth fighting for flash and to you, Vinny, I say, well, then you enjoy that life because, no, nah, I, I chose a different life. And my life does not involve all that strife and fighting and arguing and fucking problems. So, uh, <laughs> Rob Work says, just be honest, flash guns hurt your shoulders. Uh, well... No, I just think that a rifle at, you know, arm's length is useless. So, you know, or even a handgun, depending on how quick or stupid you are. I've been around guns and all that. People that shot their mouth off about, eh, it's, it's a different world. I think hunting and all that kind of crap, if you're in it for that, that's that's hunting. Can't stop a man from doing that, for fuck's sake. Some, <laughs> some people have... That if that wasn't for hunting, then maybe they'd be hunting us. <laughs> Who knows? But guns, I see. I'm not ag against them most mostly for myself. Because if I had one, I'd use the fucking thing on somebody. What would the point of having one be if you're not going to threaten somebody with the goddamn thing? Who are you going to defend from? It, I, the whole thing is just uh, it's a circle jerk to me, you know. And I believe in my. <laughs> in my way of thinking, that I bring on whatever results I get. So, should the results I get be violent, I brought them on somehow. So, I stay aware of all that shit. And for some reason or another, I haven't had any violence in my life for quite a few years. And the years that I did have it in my life, I was, you know, participating in it. So, no, it's a matter of choice. But, that's my opinion on this matter that is so freaking different. You know, from what people are used to, because they've all done the the school thing and the parent thing and the they told me and I read this and that. But I'm just going off what I did living. You know, uh, there's no proof to anything I tell you. It either happened or it freaking didn't, and I know it happened, so that's what matters. But the the sound of it and good God, but where I've been and and how I got here. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. I had a great time through my life, and I've been a lot of places. And now I'm stuck on the, the concept of 
the states is really looking bad from a distance, you know, politically and financially. And, and not that not that Denmark isn't in its own way. It's just this is so much smaller, it's a lot easier to maintain. You know, there's not 300 million people going to go crazy all at one time. It, should anything go wrong where you're at, it's worse than where I'm at. I mean, there's <laughs> most of the people around here are they they're too old for rioting. <laughs> they're they're more in the you know going to the grocery store and you know getting something to drink category. Uh, <laughs> I keep reading that over and over, but no, I'm just uh, I don't know. It's a matter of opinion, and it's not like these people here don't have guns. That's the, what I mean about the laws. Is yeah, the the state has the right, blah blah blah. But these people they can go get guns. And they can get them in both fashions, both on the market and off the market. And there's an equal amount of both. There's biker clubs all over this fucking country. And if if the police are armed, well, guess who's armed? Everybody. You know, that's just the way, you know, politics and state run. And you're not going to have your, your good guys don't even exist if you don't have your bad guys to create a need for your good guys. And here they choose um, biker gr- clubs. And I don't want to fuck with no biker club. I've seen a few of the guys ride through town. They don't They don't look like... Uh, <laughs> they don't look any different here than they did any other fucking country. I saw them flying colors. So the bikers, I'm good with the bikers. Fine. But the police, I'm good with the police because they don't bother me here. But... I don't, I've never seen them bother anybody. I've never seen the police go out of their way to... to Stop somebody that's walking, especially the walkers or the bicycle riders. And <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. it's such an obvious form of commerce to me, this road road policing, you know, for tickets and breaking codes and all that crap. They just do away with all that shit all together, <clears throat> but they miss the freaking income. So then they have to steal from you some fucking other place. So people deal with it. You know, they put up with it. You know they're going to fuck you out of it any goddamn way. Leave it alone. It's not as... It could be worse. <laughs> and that's how I look at where I'm at. They're uh, they're not on the corner of, oh, shit, and what the fuck did we do? They're on the corner of keep them oh, at an arm's length and, and tell them everything is okay. Keep them away. And that society that... Uh, I participate in, I suppose, because I do my commerce here. And I'm a regular, you know, I, people see me every other day or so, I guess. Uh, I don't think I do it every day, every other day on an average, more or less. Because, like, the biggest thing is the fresh milk for the coffee. I don't know what the hell that's about, but uh, it go, goes and it's like, you know, like I'm on autopilot. Because I'm not a big fan a fan of black coffee, I like my coffee <laughs> like I like my women <laughs> glow in the dark. No, I'm kidding, sir. Just uh, uh, I just don't care for the the dark black coffee. I wonder what that's about. But I don't drink milk by itself, so it's, it's a paradox. I can't understand it, so I don't. I just that's what I mean. There's just some things in life that. I don't need to understand them as much as uh, be told them. If something makes sense, whatever that is to me, you know, I like the proof. It makes my, you know, makes my parts hard. Well, of course. Well, then everything's fucking, you know, wonderful. But what if I don't like the proof? And what if the proof is true and I still don't like it? I wonder what an example of that would be. Because I will take global warming. And the first thing these idiots start attacking is CO2. Wait a minute. And if you know anything at all about life, then you know that CO2 is like necessary part of life. So whatever they've written after that is a bunch of bullshit because that's what they do. They lie to us. Okay. So we got that going on. Hmm. What else we got? Oh, chemtrails. They're not spraying anything on us from the sky. No, 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 no. And then they write, oh, hey, guess what we're doing to you in the sky.
But uh, the Navy, was it the Navy took it over from the Air Force? Oh, no, the Air Force took it over from the Navy. And now they're completing their good work that they never did. So, you know, we're as as a collective, as a public, this is how we're treated by the, the people in power. <laughs> they lie they lie to us through other people so that they can claim, Well, I never said that. Well, look at what they do and now what they say they do is always two different things. <laughs> we're stuck in this we're stuck in this perpetual freaking loop and we're never gonna get out of it as long as uh as long as the common man insists on having a freaking voice in shit he doesn't even understand in the first place, like global fucking warming or inoculations, you know, mandatory this and mandatory that for other people based on shit he was sold through a media that is so corrupt. Oy. <laughs> it's so corrupt it makes the government look good. But, you know, that's just my simple, humble opinion. Yeah, Rob's going on about self-ownership. Yeah, what is, you know, what is self-ownership in the first place, you know? All it can possibly be is a decision that you make in your mind. Because if you don't do the necessary paperwork in the, you know, paperwork world... Well, they hindrance your life. They control you. That's how they do it, through the paperwork. So the uh, the undocumented people are the ones that they're moving them around any which where they fucking please because there's no way to really trace back where they came from or who they fucking are. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> whatever is going on is beyond brilliant. It, it is the most deceitful, dis disgusting piece of shit, but it's a brilliant plan. And if you look at it as a plan and you watch the moves as they're made, you can call the moves before they make them. And they wrote they're going to attack certain countries years and years ago, the seven countries. And Iran, I think it's the last. No, Cuba, Iran, and North Korea are the last three standing at this time, I believe. Unless, correct me if I'm wrong here, Grim or Rob or Vinny, or anti, what do you guys might know? If uh, those three got a central bank, I don't think North Korea or Iran or Cuba does yet to this day. But the rest of them that were on the list, um, Syria, uh, Libya, they took Libya out. Uh, what, what they, the countries that they took out, what they have in common is they all dumped the petrodollar and went with gold or something else as a means of commerce. So when they did that, hey, that's... You're you're telling the United States off, and the United States they answer in violence, and then they tell their people that the person that the the, the leader of the other place that they're going to attack, that bastard did all these horrible things to his own people, and he needs to be stopped. As the U.S. government does horrible shit to its own people. And needs to be stopped, but it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more inclusive. And it's got a tighter grip instead of a weaker grip. And there's folks that really pump that up like it's a good thing. Who are those people that, that love that authoritarian stranglehold? You know, stick that fist right up my ass. Oh, it doesn't hurt bad enough, Your Majesty. Who wants to fucking live like that? I can't imagine the, uh, I don't know, the weak state of mind you have to be in to think that uh, some limousine baby portal to the past with a, you know, a young wife like me uh, is uh, going to help you get anywhere in life. You're dreaming. You know, the only thing you can possibly gain or lose in this political side bullshit is tax breaks. And if you think that you're worth enough money that it matters, what are you doing on an Internet site all the time talking about going to Starbucks? You know, that's not what successful people do. So, you know, I'm just saying that stories people tell in the RLM sometimes are a little strange and, uh, 
<clears throat> because I'm so limited, I can't figure them out. I think they're nonsense. Hmm. But I do like to rattle about, you know, how I feel representation is. It's all subjective. You see what you see. I write something, and boom, five people see five different things, <clears throat> and they're and they're all different. But that's, you know, that's the way it really is. We don't all see the same thing. We don't all believe or think the same thing. So where's the line where you can get along with somebody else regardless you know, of their personal beliefs? Like I do that with Vinny and I do it with Rob. It's a decision I make. And I don't think either of those two guys got a beef with me. And if they do, I think they'd say, hey, but you're a fucking idiot, blah, blah, blah. And then that would be that. But uh, I consider them both friendly uh Friendly, you know, entertainment on the RLM chat. But if it wasn't like that, you know, shit, you can you can always buy some new friends. Rat, just oh yeah. Speaking of buying some new friends, uh, if you guys out there in uh, Radio Land that that carry the show and listen to the crazy show that I put out, want to do any uh. Uh, finance, send it to the reallibertymedia.com to Grimnerd. And, you know, he uses uh, donations to run the, the RLM. And, uh, you know, without the RLM, we, we'd be somewhere else doing something different. So I like having the RLM. So I suggest if you got a few ducats and you feel generous, you know, there you go. And thank you if you do. And if you don't, uh, and you're just listening, I understand that too, because I don't support everything I hear. I just support certain shit, and RLM's one of them. But uh, I'm a, what do you call it? I'm a bigot. I'm an RLM bigot. And I don't know why. I just feel comfortable in a small place where a lot of people know each other. You know, whether I get along with all of them or not is really a, uh, it's not a necessity. Sometimes I just read the chat. It goes on and on and on. I don't say a damn thing. Other times I've got ideas and interjections and crap too, just like everybody else. But, you know, to take it all to heart and start making my life decisions based on what I read on the Internet uh, in a chat room ain't going to happen. But it's a lot of entertainment. You know, it's fun to see how, how we get along with each other about certain ideas. And how deep-rooted, whoa, some people get uh, personally involved in the argument about a thing that they themselves will never have to go through. But that I think call that empathy, I believe. You know, when you can put yourself in the other guy's shoes and, uh, you know, see what it would be like to be them instead of judging them. It's not as easy to do as, as it sounds, I don't think. Um, we've got some land patent talk going on here. Vinny and uh, Rob Works are going at it here. The Central Bank of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is North Korea's central bank. Okay. Established on December 6, 1947. It issues the North Korean won. The bank is subordinated to the cabinet of North Korea. Hmm. I thought they didn't have a central bank. Now they got. Now that says they got a central bank. What's the big beef with North Korea then? Hmm. I don't know. Everybody's an immigrant. I don't know. I'm an immigrant. I don't mind. You know, it doesn't bother me. I get a real kick out of uh, being able to help these kids with their English because you know they're not going to get much help outside of school because they're Danish. You know. No, I don't live where I'm born, where I was born. Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm way ahead on the chat's way ahead of me too. So, I think I don't know. I lose track of uh, the clock. I've told, I was making fun of that about. Uh, I've disavowed the damn clock, but I always, you know, find reasons that have to do with my wife to reinstate the clock. You know, the clock and uh, well, the radio too, because. There must be something to be in on time and uh, dependable. <laughs> hey, Rob. Uh, uh, but uh, 
I don't know. He said no, Flash, so I must have said something. It's hard to go back in time and remember stuff. I have enough trouble living in the now. You know, because I look at it like the, the, the internet in front of me with all its uh, entertaining tactics, games, and uh, movies to watch, and links to learn stuff about. And I've learned an incredible amount of stuff. I think I have, you know, from links, things that I could not prove before uh, I found the Internet. And the sad thing is I can't I can't use none of this good stuff that I use, that I use, that I've learned most of it. I mean, the medical stuff's been, yeah, I can use that. But uh, the legal stuff I can't use because I'm not engaged in the uh, in the legal system. So to engage it from the point I'm at would be complete and insane. There's no reason for me to pursue them. I just you know leave them alone. They leave me alone back, and everybody goes away. But you know to be called a cricket over it is ah so and but see on one end you're right you know and if I was in America you'd be completely right. Land of laws, folks. You know, Hal Anthony kind of sets you straight on. These people have manipulated uh, every one of us in one way or another way to believe something that is completely opposite from the freaking truth. <laughs> Rob works. Fake money, fake society, fake people. Hmm. I don't know about fake people. Maybe... Uh, just because you don't like what you see, that person, <laughs> oh, I need another screen. Yeah, well, I probably do, but this desk is, isn't is set up for another one. Or I could probably use the big big one, too. I'll try that the next time uh, I do radio. Good idea. Thanks a lot for that. That's a good idea, because it's got a big screen um, I could read from where I'm sitting, too. And put that on the chat and then use this other one for other stuff. That's a hey, you're a brilliant helper, Mr. Robworks. Unless you weren't talking to me and I just think you were because I'm an egomaniac and I see my name. <laughs> Fake nuclear weapons. I don't know. I seen links. There's a guy uh what's his freaking name? Anyway, it's from the forties or forties forties to the sixties. And he's drinking, or not drinking, but he's uh, applying what he's calling nuclear waste in a glass to his skin on film. So Galen, I can't remember his freaking name. I can find the link, but right now I'm doing the show, so hmm, let me write this down as a note. Um, but yet yeah, he was pouring something out of a out of a glass that was reading on a Geiger counter uh, and, it, and then pour it on his hands and you'd see the damage to his hand but then he had something neutralize it uh, and I can't think of his name it's Galen or Gaylord or some freaking weird weird name that started with a G I can't remember if this is first last so what I'm going to do is when the show's over I'm going to Go up there and look for it the fashion that I know how to. Because, you know, we're on the Internet. The computer will figure out whatever it is I'm trying to ask it to do. Unlike other things in life, like fellows, our fellow carbon-based life forms are not so quick to agree with us. I wonder what that's about. You know, it's like they lie to us about the tech that's available. And now they're unrolling all oh, this 5G. I read there's a resistance against 5G. And the, that is they're painting it with lead-based paint. And now they got this theory that lead-based paint killing the kids because they licked it or whatever the fuck that was about. Uh, okay, I'll give that a shot. The duck, duck, go in a second here. Let me open it up. Okay. Fake news and fake olds. Okay, I was just going to interrupt myself with a incoming um, link from, I believe, Grim or Rob or both. But only got the one screen, guys, so you got to deal with me. Or I have to get all, you know, in your face and do something about it. <laughs> Understand contract law and you win. 
Revolving Commercial Matters with Harmony. Okay. Well, I'll just start reading any damn where I'll start at the top and see where we go. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. What is HJR192? Can we discharge our debts to the government? Before HJR192 was passed, Executive Order 6102 was signed into effect by President Roosevelt. This executive order required all gold and gold certificates to be surrendered to the federal government by May 1st, 1933. House Joint Resolution 192 was then passed by Congress on June 5th, 1933. This law was passed to do away with the gold clause in the Constitution and in all public and private contracts. 1933 was also when the United States went bankrupt, which was not the first time that it went bankrupt. In fact, the United States was so far in debt that it went bankrupt two additional times previously, once in 1789, forming the Constitution so the states could sign on as security for the Fed's debts, and then in 1861, when the southern states said no more and wanted to secede rather than sign on to another pledging of assets to pay the federal government's debt. Then in 1933, and with H.J.R. 192, they took all the gold, all the true money, all the property, and instituted element, uh, eminent domain and property taxes, divided land titles, and instituted the income tax to control the labor of the people. In addition, with H.J.R. 192 is when they instituted instituted the birth certificates to control the people and have the future American people become the collateral for all the federal government's debts. Yes, that's right. Your birth certificate is the title to your body, and it has been pledged as an asset. The holder has the right to the taxes and fines, fees, etc. that you pay to the government through judgments, court cases, payroll, income taxes, property taxes, etc. See, I told you that damn passport's just a tax document. From the very beginning, the government was indebted to European bankers as a result of the revolution. How ironic that we had to borrow money from England to pay for the war we fought against them. <laughs> so fast forward to the early 1900s and you'll come across several key events that make it quite obvious there was a master plan at work to enslave people. If you read a book named The Creature from Jekyll Island, you'll become intimately acquainted with the happenings in the year 1910 when six men, who were either elite bankers and or politicians, met in secret in a place named Jekyll Island. The purpose of this meeting was to formulate plans for economic reforms for the United States. This is where the banking cartel began in this country. The idea of a central bank had always been rejected. And so the men who met in Jekyll Island needed to come up with a way to trick the people into allowing the central bank to be instituted. Three years later, in 1913, President Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into effect which is the current central bank in the United States, even though it is actually not governed by any agency of the federal government. Eight years later, in 1921, the Maternity Act was passed, which required all birth to be registered with the state. So now all key pieces were in place for the upcoming bankruptcy, default, and restructure. In 1933, when the federal government went bankrupt, they passed EO 6102 and HJR 192 and pledged us as collateral to the bank, the government debt. To back the government debt. Whew, wow. 
Oh, I got all bleary eyed on that one. That that hurt my feelings. <clears throat> I'm chattel. I I don't want to be chattel. Okay. They made us slaves. But they couldn't technically make us slaves because that would be illegal. So they had to give us a remedy. So what is the HJR 192 remedy? It is that the government has the obligation to discharge and settle any debts we may incur in our daily lives. Yes, this includes mortgages, car loans, utilities, etc. But wait, wasn't HJR 192 repealed? Technically, it was, but the provisions that brought us into having no money of substance still exist and apply. In other words, we didn't go back to using real money, gold and silver again, and therefore the maxim of the maxim of whoever brings the obligation must bring the remedy still applies. So the government still has the fiduciary duty to discharge and settle your debts because we still don't have access to money of real substance, and because the USA is still in bankruptcy mode. So, the Secretary of the Treasury is still the receiver in a bankruptcy. Your birth certificate is still a bond, and your debts are still prepaid by your future labor, property, and taxes that they are assuming the administration of, as the office of the executor, of the estate of all, of the all caps John H. Doe name. They still hypo, hypothetic, hypothecate, hypothecated, <laughs> they still made up the birth certificate and made billions of the birth or naturalization of every new citizen. In fact, in every court case, over 7,000 Dollars, there are new bonds created and traded off your BC estate. Okay, so now that we know this disinformation about HJR 192, can we just write something like discharge according to HJR 192 on a bill and call it a day? The short answer is no. We cannot just simply scribble some words at a 45 degree angle like the like other gurus are teaching across a bill and think that we are done and we never have to pay FRNs for our bills ever again. This is why those who are not fully informed call this the HJR192 scam because it isn't easy breezy. Wham bam, thank you ma'am fact of the matter is that this is just the tip of the iceberg, and the rabbit, holes go, rabbit hole goes far deeper than any of us ever imagined. If we really want to change our lives, it will take massive amounts of studying and a healthy dose of trial and error. We need to educate ourselves not only on the history of how this all came about, but also stay on the forefront of new technologies that can be used to change our status and obtain our remedy as close to 100% of the time as possible. If you are interested in learning more about everything from the history and inception of the Strawman to the latest and greatest on how to change your status to use what HJR 192 gave us and actually be able to use these remedies and to talk learn to other people who are using them, be sure to join our list, email list to receive regular updates. Yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. That was pretty good. I like that. Thank you very much. Was I getting uh, was I getting too philosophical tonight? Huh? 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 I did read that, Rob. Huh? Huh? <laughs> How's that for reading? Did I pass my reading chat test? I only misread a few words. But, uh, hey, we do what we can. Just remember to vote in the right crook for the right crime. Because right now... Wow, uh, I'm not per too sure if I've got all this right. I might be wrong, but uh, I think old Trump decided to go start in a war, call it a trade war, with pretty much the cheapest supplier there is on the planet. <laughs> the one with all the abundance of cheap shit, you know, to sell the people in America that don't have enough money to, to buy decent shit. So, you know, it, 
that's a lot of people, but there's a lot of people that can afford the good shit that's still getting made no matter what the rest of us do. <laughs> and, uh, wow, the, the reality of shit is so hard to explain. It's got a, no wonder they call us, and what do they call us, uh, and, uh, anarchist scum <laughs> and uh, conspiracy theorists you believe these crazy wackadoodle stories no I don't think so I think that I, I saw a link or read a link or heard a link about just the other day I think this was Grimner might have been Grim, either Grim or Mary or maybe it was just me and what it was about folks out there in Radio Land is the medical industry is losing a thousand patients a year, death, because of just uh, malpractice, basically, fuck ups and shit that they could have done right if they would have done it right, but they didn't. Easy remedy to problems is don't do it wrong, but we don't live in that world anymore. We live on fuck it up now and sue us, bitch. And because that's the only thing you got, you got court. People don't seem to have, uh, you know, certain levels of society. They don't seem to have uh, any integrity at all. It's all about what they can get away with. Well, I was doing it within the boundaries of the law. Well, yeah, but you know, shitting in a river is still shitting in a river. You fuck. <laughs> some some animal or carbon-based life form of another is going to eventually drink that. Thank you very much you know, for your uh, participation. But people don't think about stuff like that. And uh, what they do think is got to be insane. Can you imagine uh, living on the 18th floor at this time in history of any fuck? Or no way. I think the second floor is about as high as I want to go now. I, I'm done with all that crazy shenanigans. <laughs> Grimner, hospitals will kill you. See, I thought it was your your uh, Grim Leftovers podcast that I picked that up from because I listen to you guys on the RLM, I love the shows that you do as well. <coughs> and the only reason I'm still doing so much is nobody else is picking up the slack. We got a lot of people talk a big game about, you know, their opinion matters and they're with the right side and, oh, they're, they know this and they know that. But for whatever reason, they don't they don't feel secure enough with their beliefs to to do a radio podcast about it, so that you know we could hear the opposition's voice instead of just uh, just that random freaking type. And you could be anybody bullshit. You don't even have to believe what you what you type. You can type anything. Just some people do that just to rile other people. Jesus Christ, Vinny, Vinny and Robin. Doing that for a piece now. Me and Hansel have been doing it for years. You know, that, I don't know, that boredom talk. When, when you got nothing intelligent to say, so you just slap somebody in the face for no particular reason. And uh, we're bored people, you know. we got to be stimulated. Our brains aren't normal. We're not average, you know. That's something that RLMers should always try to remember. And not, not so much brag about, oh, look at me, I'm so fucking cool. But, you know, just being at a place like this, at this time in life, with the opinions that you hold, they show everybody else where you're at. You know, it, that's the only thing that this is about, you know, just so you can see who agrees with what you think. And it's such a personal, touchy fucking what I think and what I believe and all this other shit sometimes doesn't have anything to do with what's happening. I mean, what's happening is still happening no matter how I react to it. So I try to keep those, you know, keep on top of what I can see in front of me is what matters. And all these things, these outside forces are just a distraction <laughs> from my daily life so I can waste my time worrying about some faraway land. <laughs> Feel bad. Get me off the, you know, off the wavelength I'm on and put me on that negative, fearful, paranoid, oh, they're going to come and get me. I'm next on the list. Oh, what are we going to do? And I don't know if people live like that, but it, it sure seems like if they don't, they should. I read uh, 
warships were headed for Iran to show those Iranians to stop threatening the Jews by God and country. You threaten the Jews and we'll kill you. Now, sadly, threaten the Jews is a verbal freaking thing in this life, you know. All you have to do is openly be an enemy of Israel, and America will target you for re-education, son. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the way they play that game. Uh, they blame it on the central bank thing. Well, sure, this blah, 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 banking, schmanking. These fucking people trade in, in amounts of shit that one person couldn't use in a lifetime. So, nah, that, I don't know. There's some, there's just something so wrong about the face of it that all I can do is complain like a 12 year old girl about it because hmm, the details elude me, I suppose. But the overall picture, you know, the results of a world we're in, like Trump is any fucking body to be looked up to at any point in your day. Shows me that, well, one, you don't know much about Trump. If if you do know the things about Trump that I know, and you you forgive that so that the man can lead your, your country to uh, the promised land, wow, you're delusional. You know, all you're doing is uh, just rooting on a fucking killing machine. And uh, I guess the wheels ain't going to fall off that mess too awful soon. Anyway, uh, let's judge this and let's judge that and everybody else can tell everybody else what they should do instead of spending their time doing what they should do and just doing it. And I give you a verbal report because I'm far away from America now, you know, and uh, I think I'm in an exotic kind of a place if com compared to, to my upbringing. I never in a million years would have thought. What's happening was going to happen. I was going to spend the end of my life in, you know, some rural part of Denmark. I would have never even, <laughs> never even came up. And here I am doing it. So, uh, to anybody else out there that catches the show that's doing what I'm doing, man, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a different way of living, I suppose, to, uh, be international. And, because in America, you can just wait long enough and they'll bring some country to you. But it's usually an entire country. They they don't split it. I remember it was Vietnam, Vietnamese when I was a teenager. Because uh, the Vietnamese had reparations coming to them for all the horrible things Americans done to their land and people. And over and over. And you know, it wasn't even a freaking war. It was considered a military action that... That all the, all these all these things in my life that have come and gone and be been replaced by far worse instead of uh, man learning its lesson from its mistakes every every engagement is more disgusting than the one before it you know the military is out of freaking control <laughs> these people they need to be stopped not encouraged they need to be like just defunded but no. <laughs> America's running around the fucking planet just kicking the fuck out of whoever doesn't want to play the game. And at the point they're at now, they're taking, I don't know, maybe you guys are taking on more than you can handle. But uh, hmm. as long as that kind of aggression is exposed to the po populations and we see it like that, then the results are going to be not so good for us. <laughs> And all these military people got to do is just say no. But they can't because, you know, they're slaves to the military. The military owns them. That's why they have to do the shit they do. So, in my estimate of, you know, strength of character, I would say the guy that has the balls to say no to all that shit out there, all that negative shit. And not participate in it. And my hat's off to you. <laughs> and to the idiot that supports it. Wow. I hope you engage yours the way that you want them to engage mine. <laughs> because uh, life is just life. And wishing horrible shit on other people 
that's not a good practice, I don't think. I, I think I wish for you everything you wish for me is fair. That would be, you know, the only way I could find any kind of comfort in, in that argument. But to wish somebody harm, you know, it goes against my anarchist principle. Now, maybe not so much in word, but in deed. I'm not a big stickler. You call a man a nigger and he's a nigger and he's insulted, well then, what the fuck? And if you call a man a nigger and he ain't a nigger, what's he upset about? If you call him a toaster, he's not going to go insane, is he? So, it's not... see. It's not the word you use. It's the indoctrination you have about a word. And it's about as meaningless as you can possibly get, especially on the Internet, because all you can do is either type or do a podcast about it. And, uh, you know, opinions change. And Oh, I started up Tuesday night. I, I had a lot of problems with the technical shit. I just lost my freaking mind. I couldn't, I couldn't get my shit together, so I canceled the show and didn't record it. But tonight, I managed to pull the show off. I got on the air, uh, except for my little mishap <laughs> with the microphone thing. But I keep it in front of me. I've got been watching it the whole show now. Uh, I'll acquire a new habit so I don't screw this up too bad. But <laughs> It's a lot of fun to do the show and get my opinions out there and, and banter. And somebody will send a link to read. It, it's good to interact in English. And uh, that's... Probably 90% of why I bother with the radio at all is I get to keep my voice going. Because, you know, outside of Cirque and a few kids in town, that's all the English I need. And it's all the English I use, and the rest of it is uh, time spent alone. And I'm not going to spend it learning Danish. <laughs> and that's going to wrap up 20% off tonight. With me, your host, Flash. And thanks a lot, anybody that... You guys in the RLM are too funny. Uh, I'm really glad that you hang out with me, though. It'd be boring to do a show <laughs> that nobody wanted to hear. I'd be all sad and cry myself to sleep. Oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo. Anyway, we, uh, Grimner did an update on the... Um, let me see if I kept it. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no. No, no. I I thought I had a a schedule open. He updated the schedule the other day, but uh, I closed the damn thing. Usually I leave so much shit open I can't find stuff. This time I left just enough stuff open I wouldn't get confused, but I didn't save it. So we're going to do the memory game here on Thursday night and give you the lineup. And also we got Chuck Ocelli does a, a nightly show. I forget the time he does it. But he's on, I think, Channel 14. So, I don't know. Graham, you mind posting a, a schedule page and so I can get a copy? And if I start trying to do all that stuff, I'm going to screw everything up at this point. But, uh, yeah, you got Chuck Ocelli on his own channel. He's on the schedule, but we don't usually mention him uh, as a rule. I want to start doing that. And uh, get Chuck. Yeah, he's got a nightly thing going. He's five nights a week in, a, I think, New Jersey. Oh, thanks a lot, Vince. Thanks back. Uh, and let's see. Tomorrow we got coming up. Uh, Vinny does a ponder gander in the one o'clock on the East Coast on Friday afternoon, and that's one o'clock East Coast time. And then Miss Mary does the Rock Chair podcast on Wednesday and Friday night. Now I think this week they got the weekend. Uh, they got the radio. Uh, they're not, are you guys doing a, a Freakers or not? I forgot. I thought you were taking a week off, but I, I'm ahead of you. So was it this week or didn't it, or tomorrow night? I'm a little bit lost. I'll come back to it. Saturday morning, uh, I do the uh, dork table. Sometimes I get people, sometimes I do it solo. Sunday morning, we got Grimner comes in with the blues in the early morning hours and then we play some trivia in the evening afternoon evening uh, evening here and uh till Hal Anthony three o'clock on the west coast on Sundays from behind the woodshed and he's the one that with the information regarding dealing with the freaking state the playing the state game. If that's the way you want to do it, Hal knows how to play it. Uh not acceptable, huh? Uh-oh. 
I don't know what not acceptable means, but I did something to somebody. Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. Here's the schedule. Dum -da -da -dum. Thank you, Grimner. It said not acceptable underneath it, so I got a little messed up. <clears throat> All right, and that was I was left off on the Sunday behind the woodshed. See, with Hal Anthony on RLM Radio at three o'clock on Sunday, and then Monday you got Grim leftovers at seven p.m. Uh, he does the. Um, <laughs> The stories that he didn't get time to do because of all that annoying music he had to play to all his <laughs> his fans out there in Radio Land on Friday night. You know, because he plays the long, you know, 20, 30-minute blocks of music sometimes. And when he does that, well, he can't read all the links. Come on. <laughs> and then, let's see, Tuesday at 1 o'clock on the p.m. on the East Coast is me and Vinny in a, in a perfect world. And uh, I don't know, I've got so much trouble just getting this headset thing sorted out with my wife. She's been really busy lately. And when we're together, we're, I'm just not thinking about, hey, you know what, we need to find me a headset. <laughs> it's not been the first and foremost thing on my mind when I see the wife. And there it is, a time for Ocelli. The Ocelli Effect is on Channel 14 at 8 p.m. on the East Coast, Monday through Friday. Okay, there you go with that. Now, Wednesday, again, Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM at 7 p.m. East Coast. And then Thursday rolls around, and I try to do this crazy crap again, 2 p.m. on Thursday on the East Coast of the U.S. of A. And, uh, hey, as usual, thanks a lot to everybody that's out there hanging in there with us in this uh, very unpopular outlook of life, you know, the non-status Fuck the government, fuck these big pharma, fuck, 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 fuck the popo, everybody, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's this week that no freakers and no Grammy tomorrow night, if I'm correct. If I'm not, I'm screwing it up for everybody. But uh, that's it, folks. Thanks a lot, and see you next time.